The views expressed on this special broadcast of the Take 12 radio show do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. A very scary experience. You know, God is a solution. God is 12 step. I like where he's going here. Helps the community grow, helps us grow. <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie has done a phenomenal job. And you're talking about taking people through a spiritual process and getting them into recovery. Thanks, Monty, uh, and thanks for all your support. We need spirituality to make this thing work long term. It's an absolute pleasure. He certainly knows a lot of people. This is one of the places that is about the business of the solution. And now, broadcasting on location somewhere in the vast expanse of the Pacific Northwest, it's the over-opinionated 12-stepologist, The Monty Man. I am your host, The Monty Man. Welcome to another episode of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show. Let's jump right into this week, shall we? Now, on occasion, I enjoy going back into the archives and reviewing some of our shows, some of our best shows, and sharing them with you. Now, this week, we're bringing from the archives a show with my co-host, Mason and Brad, and a special guest that we had invited in the studio, Devin. Now, all of us are members of the 12-step recovery community, and we're sitting down talking about 12-step meeting addiction. Let's see what that's all about. Let's join the gang for this episode of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show from September 2010. Addiction to meetings. Now, I'm going to read you uh, a uh, a little article here. I thought this was this was interesting. Um, the church will be closed tomorrow, and the drunks are freaking out. <laughs> an elderly uh, lady, yeah, an elderly lady in a prim white blouse has just delivered the bad news with deep apologies. A major blizzard is scheduled to wallop Manhattan tonight, and up to a foot of snow will cover the ground by dawn. The church, located on the Upper West Side, can't ask its staff to risk a dangerous commute. Unfortunately, that means it must cancel the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting held daily in the basement. Well, a worried murmur ripples through the room. What? What are we supposed to do? Ask a woman in her mid-twenties and uh, smudged black eyeliner. She's in rough shape, having emerged from a a multi-day alcohol and cocaine bender that morning. The snow is going to close everything, she says. Her cigarette uh, adlibbed voice tinged with panic. Everything. She's on the verge of tears. A mustache man in skin tight jeans stands and reads off the number for a hotline that provides up to the minute meeting schedules. He assures his fellow alcoholics that some groups will still convene tomorrow despite the weather. Anyone who needs an AA fix will be able to get one, though it may require an icy trek across the city. That won't be a problem for a uh, thick set man in a baggy beige sweatsuit. Doesn't matter how much snow we get, a foot, ten feet piled up in front of the door, he says, I will leave my apartment tomorrow and go find a meeting, come hell or high water. (laughs) Uh, He clasps his hands together and draws him to his heart. You understand me? I need this. Daily meetings, the man says, are all that prevent him, or excuse me, all that prevent me from winding up dead in the gutter. She was gone because I've sold them for booze or crack. And he hasn't had a drink in more than a decade. (laughs) Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, this probably paints uh, a pretty accurate picture in a lot of parts of the country. If that were to happen, the meetings closed down because uh, of snow. I, I mean, I know when I I, I lived in um, Tumwa, Iowa, for a very short period of time, and I remember the ice storms, and I remember how uh, one side of town would be completely closed off. You couldn't get to it because there was only a couple of bridges that went over the river to, to go over there. And so what happens? You know, what happens when an AA or NA or your 12-step meeting is shut down and you can't get to it? Um, 
I want to talk about we, we we spent a lot of time here on Take Twelve Radio talking about how important it is not to become meeting dependent, how important it is to become God dependent, because there is going to come a time when you can't get to a meeting and you might be a lot easier for you to get to a drink. And so what do you do if the meetings are keeping you sober and you can't get to a meeting? Does that mean you drink? Does that mean you use Uh, in a lot of people's cases? The answer is yes to that. Um, There's even worse things than drinking and using sometimes. Yeah, I mean, sometimes people kill themselves over things. I mean, like, sure. they're going to be the insanity because the insanity doesn't necessarily like, you know, like as it says, the bo- you know, the bottle or the whatever is just an outward manifestation of the inward thing. Yeah. And so, you know, there's the, the insane thinking. I've heard people even, yeah, about suicide even like it, it can get bad. They can't get to a meeting and so they don't know what to do. I don't know if it's about necessarily you. not getting to a meeting, but mm-hmm. I've heard of that one. That's I'm just sure. saying that. As and, well. and, and this can be the case with with. With church, synagogue, yeah. your, your any <clears throat> excuse me, a support system, a support group. You know, it, 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 if I can't get with those group of people, how am I going to make it? You know, and, and I I think that maybe we have taught uh, our fellows that if you don't make it here, if you don't keep coming back, you're going to be one of the losers. You're going. You know, sticking with the winners means you're at a meeting every day, and and uh, or it's a great sort of start. It's a great start. It's a great start. But are we not teaching people? You know, it, 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 if you're not here, because I hear it all the time, you guys. Well, so and so isn't here. They're they're cut back. They're coming only twice a week. Something's wrong. You know, and is that one of the winners saying that? Yeah, that, yeah. Good you question. Know? You know, good question. And so, if we're teaching people that meetings are what keep you sober and then something happens and they can't get to one or they're on vacation or whatever in the city they're driving through uh, today just doesn't have one. What are we doing? Aren't we giving them a loaded gun? I believe so, honestly. And not only that, the um, the amount of meetings as well. Um, mm-hmm. I feel it gives you, I don't know, an excuse to not do your step work. Honestly, not to not ah, do the steps. Cause, um, good point. Seriously, if I mean, I don't know if I don't need it, and Maybe which is think. important to me because I worked a pretty much a two week long um, 11th step the last few weeks. I'd made it to very few meetings in the last, I mean, what two or three meetings in the last two weeks, mm-hmm. but I had a great week. My because if it if the book is right and my sobriety depends on my spiritual condition, then it my sobriety is doing great. I've been practicing every principle of the program in my everyday life, so. My condition has been, you know, I've been great, doing great. Not to say those meetings aren't important, because I went to a meeting yesterday, and specifically certain people needed to talk to me, and I heard some great things from people that improved what I'd say would be my spiritual condition. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't want to doubt the the importance of meetings either, but that right. dependency wasn't there. I was able to practice everything in my life, which is important too. You have to live a life. You can't just, because yeah, if that meeting wasn't there, would I have been able to stay sober? Yeah, I, I found that out within the past, <laughs> the, just recently. Mm-hmm. A lot of people had thought I'd become complacent too, which is poss- also possible. But <laughs> you well, know. when you see somebody every day mm-hmm. or every other day on a regular basis for a long time, then all of a sudden they vanish, or they, it appears that they vanished for like a week or two weeks. Um, because of who we are, we we highly suspect something's wrong. Yeah, if we haven't know, heard, well, heard anything, that's first thought wrong, you know. And a lot of people do that, right? Um, you know, sometimes meetings just flatline, you know, and mm-hmm. you get you get a little you get a little bored, you know, mm-hmm. and and to take some time off uh, isn't a bad thing. But you have to be, uh, you have to be. I guess ready for it, you know. I think if to you know have, that you're going to take a couple of days off and. Well, if you have a scale and you want to stay balanced, if you're going to remove pieces from one side, you need to put something in its place. Yeah. So what is it? Okay, if you, a person goes on vacation and they don't know if they're going to get to meetings uh, very often, and uh, they prefer to do that, it's a part of their day. I'm not saying they're meeting dependent, but it's. It's part of their their ritual, so maybe they need to call their sponsor mm-hmm. a little more often while they're on vacation, or you know, replace it with something, or 
had their nose in the literature a little bit more, or maybe up their I prayer life. That's a little the biggest bit more. part for me is the literature. That's mm-hmm. honestly what AA meetings are about for me is that AA program that's in yeah. that book. And as as opposed to, I got to a point where I couldn't handle meetings for a while because I was hearing people talk about um, just so much stuff that was just there every day. I don't know. They it was used, being used as a personal clubhouse where people could go and complain about little things. And I think at that point. Maybe for other people's help, those people could not use it. It could take a break from meetings as well right. if, when you're there every day, you know. And um, not only – I don't know. It gets to a point where just people – it becomes routine, mm-hmm. which I guess get, structure is great. Mm-hmm. But it w- when it comes to a point where it's routine, are you really working a spiritual – the spiritual mm-hmm. program? Because if anything routine is not – I don't know. I, I feel farther away from that spiritual um, – that higher power or whatever, especially – like church, especially mm-hmm. for me, like I haven't really done well in, with church, mm-hmm. which I, but I've seen a lot of people church dependent. They're dependent on their pastor. They're dependent on their, mm-hmm. they're dependent on those people there for God. When instead of being God dependent, they're people dependent right. for that connection to God. And that's exactly. not what it should be. It's, they need that power working in their life in every area of their life. And that's what I need mm. for everything. I need it working in every area of my life. And it's, if I don't have a life, what's. I don't know. And I and I want to I want to touch on the importance of of meetings or the oh, importance yeah. of church or your support group or whatever. Please do. A, <laughs> as well. But we'll get to that in a minute. What do you think, Devin? Do you think people could become meeting dependent? Um yeah, but I have to agree with what you said, Mason, about you get a, a couple of meetings in and you're hearing a lot of little complaints about little stuff and you're not getting anything good out of yeah. it. You're you're leaving there going you know, I, I'm not going to come in tomorrow. You know, me personally, I start my day off uh, by talking to my sponsor before mm-hmm. I have breakfast or take a shower. That's how I start my day off. And that's a great way to start off. Um, I haven't done meetings every day. You know, I'm mm-hmm. in very, very early recovery. You know, and I didn't do the 90 and 90. There was days where I had to take off because it was just little things and I wasn't getting anything. Nitpicking almost. Yeah, I wasn't N- getting nitpicking anything. Is it, is. it wasn't helping me. It was it was hurting me. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, and so I think, me personally, uh, I don't. I'm not dependent on it. You know, I don't. Ha- I don't feel like I have to. I feel like I have to talk to my sponsor. I feel like I have to start my day off. Somebody about that knows about the program, yeah. the the actual program, not more, there. More on a, on a personal yeah. level instead of a group level, if, if that makes sense. So, you, so you got accountability going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, one thing that I mean, I've been going for a little while, and it, the AA meeting is one of the the biggest places where I have to go in with absolutely no expectations because I'm going to be let down, you know. And if I start to hear something that I don't like, I have the choice to get up and go outside for a little while. Or know? stay and grow. <laughs> Let it pass. Sometimes. Well, sometimes yeah. you can't. You get irritated. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, anxiety, unfortunately, is uh, you can get it from hearing somebody talk. And that that's hard because then your, your, your head starts racing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but... One of the things, like I said, that, that I have done that I've been able to regularly regularly go to meetings um, is to take everything at face value, you know. I mean, not, not expect anything and try to understand where the person is coming from, you know. Because what can be little to somebody can be huge to sure. somebody else. Sure. You know. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, you know, in my first, in my early recovery, you know, I tried to go to a meeting every day, and I felt that I needed it. Mm-hmm. But then that need went to a want. Started working here. Great service work. Mm-hmm. So there was a, you know, the weight thing. Right. Um, right. The balance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and yeah, there are people that you can tell who are very dependent on those meetings. Mm-hmm. You know, because they'll tell you that. And unfortunately, yeah. you don't and you want this to happen for the people, but you don't see really any progress mm-hmm. happening They're They're stuck in a rut, mm-hmm. you know, and you want to help. But most likely you're going to give opinion. 
you know, and something like that. Um, don't you think that, Brad, don't you think that, um, and you ask us too, be, because of who we are, you know, addicts, alcoholics, and so forth, and, and, and really addicted to compulsivity and so and that kind of thing, um, that for so many years of our lives, we would do just what it was necessary to get by. You know, and if we were perfectionists and we couldn't do it perfect, we would just do what was necessary mm-hmm. to get by. And so here, here we come into uh, our 12 step fellowship. I'm not even talking about the program right now, the fellowship. And we, we say, hey, this is keeping me away from using friends because I can come here every day. Um, this is making me feel good like I've done something, even though I haven't done anything. <laughs> You know, but in the beginning, it is a big deal. In yeah. the beginning, I've really, I really, wow, I walked into this room. You know, that's an amazing accomplishment. Um, but we get to the point where, okay, this is enough to get by. So that's all we do. And to to get a sponsor and work steps and apply the principles in our life, and that just seems awfully overwhelming. I mean, do I really want to put that much effort into this thing when I can just get by? Look at all these other people that all they do is go to meetings and they've been sober for years. Don't, don't you find that we can kind of fall into that? I mean, oh yeah, you know, um, very easily as a matter of fact because the complacency thing. Okay, I'm I'm under the radar, you know. I'm yeah. not drinking. Yeah. Um. So everything is fine, you know, and that's that. Uh, uh, oh, what do they call it? State of uh, where you you feel good, so you must be better. Oh, right, you right. Know. And after all, don't meeting makers make it? <laughs> Not all of them. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like saying, well, you know, uh, meeting uh, people that make the meetings make it. You you know, it's not the people that do the work; it's the people that make the meetings, and, and that's just not true. Meeting makers, if that's all you're doing. You're just making meetings. Mm-hmm. There's something for me that I was just thinking of that was the, the biggest part is a lot of, for me, is a lot of people that are the so-called, the old timers, I guess what you'd consider it. Yeah. The people that go there, um, you know, that most of, most of what they're going for is, tw- you know, at least is claimed as the 12-step work, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're going there. But um, what I, what the biggest part for me is it feels like, um, especially when I was really early in, that I was, it was almost having the opposite effect. Um, when I was hearing somebody talk about somebody like their husband not taking out the trash and not feeding the dogs and like, and you know, me and my life is broken. I don't know what's, you know, my, I didn't, it was really right. the, almost the opposite effect of, you know, I'm like, what, seriously, you know, yeah. and it's just like, that's when it was, that becomes reverse 12 step work almost. You're not really mm-hmm. showing me. And I'd heard people say, you know, I knew there's a girl, you know, she's like, well, and they were talking about, well, I feel off. I haven't been to a meeting in a week and you can tell how important these are. And yeah, they are very important, but am I going to be completely off because I haven't made one in a week? No. Mm -hmm. And there's just some other things with it. But I also wanted to say later about the importance of Mm -hmm. them because, and even the the importance of the clubhouse, I didn't necessarily mean it that that's a bad thing as well. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many great things that have came out of that. The campouts, the fellowship itself Mm, has had amazing factors in my life without the actual work. But also with the sure. meeting isms, you know, the stuff about like taking out the trash or whatever, you know, just little things like just, you know, little nitpicking mm-hmm. when it gets to that. I feel like I can't really um, talk about the stuff in the book or the stuff that's actually going on in my actual recovery because it became a clubhouse where everybody talks about their life as opposed to what they're, how they're working their program. I don't even feel comfortable talking about the spiritual stuff. I just say I've been working my 11th step, even though, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or I've been even though what has really been going on at some amazing cool things. But if we're afraid to say that, but they say it all over the big book, Mm -hmm. is it really a AA or NA or any of those meetings? Is it really a meeting if, you know, we're not even talking about the stuff? Or is it just a social time? Or is it just a social hour where we're all not drinking and using or not? Because what would happen if we did step up to the plate and, and, and those of us who, who maybe have a little head knowledge, uh, about the literature, actually listened very closely to the topic and actually shared the application of these spiritual principles with the topic. wonder what would happen. I 
wouldn't. I almost most of the time I don't feel comfortable. I don't think that I'd be coming from a. I don't know what what would be my intention of doing that, because well, hopefully that's what the meeting does. But it, I've been to very few that have done that, and very mm-hmm. usually the larger the meeting, too, the less comfortable the actual spiritual principles of the program are. And, and yet, I've learned and, that every single step is a spiritual principle. I didn't realize that yeah. until the last few and weeks. And yet it needs to be just the opposite. I mean, yeah. we, we need to be. Um, the meeting yesterday I thought was awesome. Yeah, I liked yesterday's meeting a lot. There was, there was, a, there was no judge, judge, at least that, we could, that I could feel. Uh, a lot of people talked about God openly. A lot of people talked about it were God specific. And they were, were also... Um, it was when they talked about not running off of instincts anymore, not mm-hmm. letting being driven by fear and not mm-hmm. being all these things, not running off of instincts. That's right out of the 12 and 12, yeah. right out of how it works. You know, that they were talking that stuff. So, and I really got a lot out of yesterday. Yeah. And um, it's basically routine is when I don't get a lot of that. Somebody else chaired yesterday that doesn't usually chair. Yeah. And they shared what was personal with them mm-hmm. and started it off. Great is what I think that what mm-hmm. really got it started. But then I know that. We've gotten to some places where it's like, well, it's this person's Monday that chairs. It's their Monday. They chair. Mm-hmm. And and we know that that person doesn't have a speci- a faith or something. Or they may have a faith, but they're, there's one of them that, you know, really uh, right. picks a topic for somebody else. We, right. We, we, right. You know. And so it's – I'm choosing not to go on certain days because I know what the motive is or I know what's going to happen. It's I think it's more the routine. That gets that that gets old for me, mm-hmm. but I really really want to stress on the importance of meetings. Um, yeah, well, let's talk about. That. I've I've really gotten to a place where um, everybody in my life is clean and sober now. I didn't think that that was possible, especially at my age, because you know I'm fairly young right. still, and uh, but my whole circle of friends clean and sober. Um, there's a few that are able to normal drink, which I don't understand, but they don't <laughs> they don't around me. And right. I've been to the campouts and all these amazing things. And there was one day I remember you were there um, when I didn't know where I was going to even sleep that night. A bunch of crazy stuff had happened. I didn't right. know where I was going to go. And I was upset. And I was called on in a meeting. And I just kind of sh- said exactly what was going on with me. That's not related to the AA Big Book or anything. That's re- related to what's going on with me in the fellowship. So that's important, too. And a bunch of people stepped up and helped me out. That's important stuff. Yeah. You have to have that. And if I'm in a, just a desperate place where something's going on with me and I have to share it, share it. I, I would recommend sharing it to anybody. If you have something going on with you, don't hide it. Mm-hmm. If something's truly going on with you, because that has been a saving thing for me multiple times, especially when I didn't have a power greater than myself that I knew of or that I was yeah. you know, following. So um, those things have saved me in a lot of times. It's just the dependency that's not important. I do need to not be dependent on them. Yeah. But they're going to them even semi regularly is a good thing. I like to go. I like to be there for other people a lot of times too if I don't feel like I need one. But then there are times where I feel if if I feel like I'm gonna get a resentment because somebody's sharing about something I don't want to hear about, then more often than not, if I don't really need one, should I go and get that resentment? Hmm, if I don't if point. I get that it's, sometimes I don't know. Sometimes right. I re- the the feeling of going there for somebody else overpowers that. Mm. You know where I should mm-hmm. go, but then mm-hmm. it, sometimes it gets to the point where I'm like, I don't want to hear this stuff today. But then when that happens, it's usually a problem with me and not with them. I have to admit that. Mm-hmm. So, do you think that sometimes? Sorry, I talked for a long time. No, no, that's <laughs> really good stuff. Um, I give, give you an example. Uh, I have, and Bruce has been on the show several times, and he and I were talking, and he's done this too. I've actually pulled in the parking lot of a meeting, and turned around and just left. Not because I saw somebody's car that I didn't want to see. Not because anything was wrong. It just, I don't know. It just didn't, it was like, you know, I really don't want to do this today. I do this every day. You know, I I just think I'm going to go home, eat lunch, and, you know, then go back to work after that. I just really don't feel like doing this. Is that an unhealthy thing or can that be healthy? I think if you get a gut feeling... You should normally kind of follow it if it feels very sincere. Yeah. I mean, if it feels like one, like, I probably should do something else today, then why, then why not? If right. you're, But if there's something you'd rather do, you know what I mean? If it's like a bunch of stuff where it becomes a regular thing, like, I'd rather play video games than go for yeah. a long period of yeah. time, then obviously that's a different thing. That's something else. And it's the people that are meeting dependent that'll get on your case. It is. And I've had a lot of people 
Well, I had some people call me out of concern that because they just haven't seen me. They want to mm-hmm. know that we're asking how I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And I've had some that almost treated me like I wasn't doing well. Right. Which in reality, my spiritual condition had been greater than it ever had been. Yeah. Where, and I believe like the book is right that my my um, sobriety depends on my spiritual condition, mm-hmm. and all these steps are a thing t- about that. And you know what? And the biggest part is if I'm not doing inventory, if I'm not, um, and if I'm not, um, you know, admitting it, you know, ten, eleven, twelve. If I'm mm-hmm. not doing inventory and admitting when I'm wrong, when they, that's working a bunch of steps first. Mm-hmm. If I don't remember that my life is unmanageable and that I need a power greater, my every. If I'm not working every step, basically, right. And if I'm not carrying it with me into what I'm doing, then it might be a time to go to a meeting too. And it's also a time where if I'm not doing that and I'm going to a lot of meetings, then maybe it's time to go to less. It's kind of a balance that you need to find Mm -hmm. in between the two Mm -hmm. of them. It's basically, you can say by how well I'm doing inventory or how well I'm maintaining conscious contact. Hey, that's some great insight, Mason. Thank you. We're going to be rejoining this broadcast. But first of all, I want to tell you about a new book by our good friend and Take 12 Recovery Radio contributor, Dr. Alan Berger, the author of 12 Stupid Things That Mess Up Recovery. His brand new book, 12 Essential Insights for Emotional Sobriety, Getting Your Recovery Unstuck. If you're anything like me, if you've been around the rooms of recovery for a long time, sometimes you feel a little stagnant. Sometimes you feel stuck. Well, this book is going to help you get unstuck and put excitement and enthusiasm back into your walk of recovery. 12 Essential Insights for Emotional Sobriety is available on Amazon. Please check them out. You can get an autographed copy of this book by visiting abphd.com. All right. Now, back to our show and a question I have for our special guest, Devin. Devin, what what are some of the uh, the positive attributes of going to a meeting for you? Oh, boy. Um I'm in the process of, I'm in the learning process. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not in the teaching process as where you, you are and Brad and Mason is. Oh, believe me, we're I'm learning not, too. We're brother. learning, bud. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, I know I, what you're saying. I feel like I'm a preschooler, you know. Uh-huh. But um, I have a question. Uh, you mentioned how sometimes you pull in and uh, you just get that feeling and you go have some lunch. Yeah. Go get some work done. Um, I've had that feeling, but uh, where okay, maybe I heard something in the first half that's triggered something, Mm -hmm. and maybe I should just go home before I say something and offend somebody, and it turns into an argument, Mm -hmm. you know? But I've stayed, and I've wished I had left at break time, (laughs) you know? But I I, I feel guilty. I feel like, oh, I'm here. I have to stay now, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... And I've been told, you know, don't feel guilty. If you feel like you need to leave, leave. The door stays open. Yeah. You know? People can come and go, which happens. You know, people walk in, they're there for five minutes and walk out, you mm-hmm. know, with tons of sobriety. Mm-hmm. But here I am, you know, I'm like, you know, do I get up right now because I don't like what that guy said? <laughs> and I'm just angry right <laughs> now. Yeah. You know, can I, and they say to turn your phone off or turn the ringer off. Sometimes in the middle of a meeting, I want to make a phone call. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. At that point, I think it's we, are we make bets on when the uh, first cell phone's going to go off. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, so I, I think, um, uh, again, yeah, I think uh, you know we're free to come and go. Um, at the same time, sometimes those are those times to press in and just buck up. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah. I, one of the one of the attributes of meetings for me is I've learned over the years how to become tolerant. It's, I've, oh, yeah, I've practicing learned how to patience. Be, I've, I've learned, learned patience. I've learned, I've learned how to, to not be scared to death when speaking in front of people. I've learned to, uh, to, to be quiet, though, you know, although there's been times when, when everything in my being said, you've got to say this, whatever it is that's on your mind, and was quiet anyway. I've learned that there. I didn't learn that anyplace else. There's some yeah. stuff too. Um, what the biggest one I've learned is um, um, to get. I've heard positive messages from people mm-hmm. that I wouldn't think of as a positive person, uh-huh. and wouldn't think of as somebody I would even care to be around. And I've heard something out of them that I really needed to hear. Yeah. And that that's from 
practicing that patience. That's from, you know, learning these things and, you know, from being there. So there's a definitely positive out of nature. I don't know what's that, like the flower growing out of the concrete or whatever kind sure. of thing. Um, well, your you know, question, wait, wait, hold that thought for a minute. You had a question, though. Uh, it, I have a feel of like guilty feeling. Oh, for it, for wanting to get yeah, up and leave, or yeah, hmm. yeah. Is that is that a is that? Should I have a guilty feeling, well, or should I go, kind of with, go with my thought? You probably, like most of us, even though we got messed up, probably had some things in our raising that said you just don't stand up and leave, or you know, there's some basic life skills that we feel like. Gosh, is that rude? Or you know, should I do that? Or I'm going to feel that's, bad if I do. I mean, some of that's just natural. Being a non-smoker it? doesn't make that easy. We can't just go smoke like the other ones can if we don't. <laughs> if we hear something, we well, don't like. you know, uh. and if you're feeling something, anyways, I mean, if you if you get a feeling that makes you want to leave, and then you put on top of that the guilt of leaving, mm -hmm. you're beating yourself up. You mm -hmm. know, bottom line, and I'm very comfortable with this now. I go to the meeting for myself. I don't care, you know, what anybody else thinks, you know, because I'm going there to learn. And bottom line, that's it. You know, the patience and the tolerance was the biggest thing that I had to 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 bring into my life. Uh huh. And it happens everywhere, you know. And AA is a big place because there's so many different people who have the same common problem, you mm -hmm. know, the alcoholism. Um, and, yeah, you know, and this happens a lot with newcomers, and I'm not saying anything bad, you know, I mean, because when newcomers come in, you can see the difference between them and the old-timers because they're talking about things that are happening in their life right now. Sure. Okay? They haven't gone to that point to where... They can start talking what they're reading. Solution and all that kind exactly. of stuff. They're right they're in their just, mess right they're now. Yeah. Holding on mm -hmm. as best they can. And they're gonna talk about things that are happening in their that life. Relevant right now because within. they want yeah. it to get better. Mm hmm That was know? important for me in my early recoveries to share that. Yeah. Not have somebody so not have somebody say, You need to be quiet. Oh, See, I remember and, when I heard it so-called old timer you know yeah. uh, never i don't think he's ever read the book or done anything but yeah i remember him telling when a newcomer shared and then right after that he shared how people shouldn't new that are new shouldn't share <laughs> so that's are we teaching poison in meetings sometimes yeah. <laughs> yeah i needed to in mine and i instantly my face almost turned red i didn't feel like i needed to leave that meeting but i felt a responsibility to tell that person to do that they need to say what they need to say i remember that yeah, yeah. Because for still, some of us, this is the I very first time. Too. This is the very first time we felt comfortable to even open up a little. Mm -hmm. That's and that's then have why. somebody say, "You just need to be quiet." And you know, you see somebody who who comes in, and they're introverted. They're in a shell, mm -hmm. and they're hurting bad. I was big time. Yeah, and they hit their thirty days, and they're smiling from ear to ear because they know that they have some place to go. Where they can talk and people are going to listen. Mm -hmm. and the big, You've got to respect that from the very first person to the person who's been there the longest. Yeah. I think respect is one of the biggest things to. I mean, and that's just. I mean, you're 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 changing your life for the better. Mm -hmm. You know, why not give somebody the benefit of the doubt? Mm -hmm. It's uh, like Darlene says, it's only five minutes. Yeah. Or less. Yeah. You and know. you know, if somebody is meeting dependent and they got to be there every day great you know but focus on yourself <clears throat> you know that's what you're there to do is to get better not to get i mean you're going to give i'm there to also what you have yeah i'm and, also there to give it away too. yeah not exactly. just so i can get better i'm not i, I wanted to you know it's not ne oh, necessarily a selfish thing i'm there to share what i have too with other people you know but i feel like if i can't share that and i don't really need something then maybe i should not be there that day but then again, my phone is always on, and I'm mm -hmm. always willing to talk or work with another, mm -hmm. um, you know, alcoholic or addict or anything. I'm always willing to work with another person, but just that yeah. meeting specific. If I feel like I can't be that there that day, I just better not be there that day. It's pretty simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Meetings by themselves 
aren't going to get or keep anybody sober any more than going to church is going to get somebody saved. You know what I'm saying? And by sober, you mean like of mind and body, yes. right? Because yes. I've so seen I'm not people talking that try. I'm because I've about seen sober. some people be able to not drink by going to a lot of meetings. Sure. Just the accountability alone is enough to hold yeah. them, I guess. Yeah, and they they very well well they're probably not true alcoholics, unless I mean I'm talking about more dry that, drunks. Yeah, I've seen uh, because if meetings is going to do it, and no spiritual connection with with the Creator is necessary, then. The pro- the person's probably just a par- problem drinker, and their problem solved. You know, uh, that at least that's been this alcoholic's experience. Well, that, they, you know, they, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. There's nothing wrong with oh, being no. a problem drinker and figuring out a way to to that not to be a problem anymore. <laughs> that's awesome. Of, of fa- of this thing I saw on Facebook a while ago. Somebody said something. You know. That they, you know, they're like, you know, recovery's great and this is great, but you know, I'm kind of sick of hearing it. And then somebody's like, agree, they're like, me too, you know, I went there and I did that, you know, so big deal, I, you know, I'm not doing, dr- you know, they're not doing drugs. And I'm like, well, then you're probably just were a drug abuser, you know. From yeah. my point, I can't quit on my own and I can't mm-hmm. stay quit for very long if I'm able to. Mm-hmm. So I think that a lot of those people just don't get it that are able to do that yeah. as well, and it's almost frustrating. To see now that. here's here's. Uh, here's some really important reasons why to go to, to go to meetings. Uh, uh, first of all, where are you going to hear the stuff that teaches you not to become meeting dependent if you haven't gone to a meeting? Mm-hmm. Where are you going to meet the people, right, that you have learned to become accountable to if you don't go to meetings? You know, where are you going to pick up the literature that you never heard of before? Exactly. If you don't go to meetings. So there's a, a good key balance you need. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially in early. I would not shy away from um, individual work with another uh, person who's uh, mm-hmm. had some great sober time, not just mm-hmm. not just you know clean time, definitely mm-hmm. some good. Um, also, give the book a try. <laughs> yeah. it's, that's the most important part of it. That's the one thing that has saved me it, um, in this. And it's not the book, the pages itself. It's, you know, what I've found through that yeah. that's, you know, truly saved me. So, um I think that um, addiction would suggest that you're not in control. The substance or whatever it is 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 the one that's calling the shots. So if a person, I, you know, I heard uh, I've heard the slogan, "Well, I'm addicted to Jesus now," or "I'm addicted to God now," or "I'm addicted to going to meetings now," or "I'm," going, I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. No, that's a you know if, if I mean. I don't want to become now as far as being addicted to God. Yes, I want to be totally dependent on him. But there's a difference between being dependent on something and being addicted to it. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have to convince myself that I have a higher power and he's helping me. I mean, it's something that I have to feel inside. And I I do. So you need to know it, not just believe. Yeah. And I do truly. I see it every day, Mm -hmm. you know, and everything. And that's the fact that I've come back from a place where I was ready to to just end it, mm-hmm. you know. And now I appreciate, you know, each day. And some days are hard. I went through a three-week spell here just recently where it, it was tough, and I withdrew. But I knew... I, I knew that I had to pull myself out of it or something drastic was going to happen. And I opened up to my mother. Hmm. I said, Mom, I'm going to drink. This is bad. Mm-hmm. And from that point on, I realized I know what to do. Mm-hmm. I've been there before. Mm-hmm. You know, got myself back to meetings, got myself back in here. And I did it on my own. You know, I, I, I had to get rides. Right. You know. what, what do you mean by I did it on my own? Did you have... Well, I... I I'm, I'm, curi- I'm just curious. I, I, didn't, I didn't... I'm just cu- I didn't allow other people to make the decisions oh, okay. for me. I, I didn't... I mean, the spirituality... Okay, was I, was, there, I was just... I was just yeah, I, get... I understand what you're saying. I mean, my faith is always there whether I'm thinking about it or not. You know? But what I mean, I did it on my own was I realized that I was going in a bad direction and I couldn't do that anymore. Okay, I was just curious. I didn't yeah. know I didn't yeah. know what we were well, No, you brought up a good point, you know. Um 
And I needed to get to a meeting. But after a week of meetings, I got back into it. Mm-hmm. You know, and there you have the confidence, the courage, and the faith to know that you have the ability to make it as long as you are able to rely on your higher power. Um, yeah, if you're leaning on his power, you're, you'll be all right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, and that that's where I went from the need to the to the want. You know, I want I want to go to meetings. I absolutely, it just drives me crazy. You know, yeah, yesterday, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well, uh, go ahead. I was just saying, yeah, and that was the weird thing about yesterday. I'm like, I really want to go to a meeting today. I hadn't had that feeling in a while because uh-huh. I did become uh huh bur- sure. burnt out almost. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Uh, 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 Devin, have, have you ever heard anybody say um, uh, that uh, meetings or the program or the fellowship and then there's, there's difference, but any of those things are for people that, want it not for people who need it yeah i've heard that did that rub you the wrong way it confused me yeah yeah depends on how i think about it i can get rubbed the wrong way by that too and there's two different things mm-hmm. i could think of because there's a lot and then i hear this people say well we have a group of people and none of them are court ordered here well you know what <laughs> get off your high horse seriously let me tell you something whatever it is whatever it is that is drawing you to a meeting, whatever God is using using to pull you to into a meeting. I don't care if it's the court. I don't care if it's your own conscience. I don't care if it's your desire or your lack of desire. Whatever it is, get them through the door. Yeah, One you the- know. And and and, and you know, when when I came in. I wanted a solution, but I can't tell you that I wanted that solution. No, I didn't either. <laughs> you know, so if if you're telling me this this isn't for me because I don't want it, you know, I don't have this deep desire to come yeah. into a twelve step meeting and be part of and all <laughs> this stuff. Listen, there are many times I don't want it, but I definitely need it. Mm-hmm. So when people oh, yeah. say, you know, this is for people that want it, not need it, that's a bunch of horse manure, as my mother would say. Really? Yeah. Well, I think. Also, I'm. I was just thinking about the court ordered thing. I look at some who really, really didn't want it, and they're mm-hmm. probably not going to get it if they really, really don't want it. Mm-hmm. Like if you're if you're closing yourself off entirely. Mm-hmm. But then I think I can look at uh, one of the people that we have in ours that was originally court ordered, and they have quite a few years now. They're one of the people I look up to more than a lot of the other people in there. They have something you want when you look at them. Mm-hmm. You're like I want something that that guy has, and I think, and that's actually your. Your sponsor, Devin, that I can think of that is one of them. Oh, okay, sure. You know what I mean? Like you can look at that. So that whole quarter thing that doesn't mean anything. You look at some of the people who got that judge nudge, and it really, oh, uh, yeah. it, it really yeah. affected. It's the best thing that happened to their life. And then yeah. there's a lot where they weren't ready yet. Is my only thought. Mm-hmm. So, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You never want to go to a meeting. You need to go. No, no, no. I said there are times when when I don't want to go, but okay. I do need to go. Because I think that the feeling. No, of I want to go most of the time. I think that the feeling of need, if you if you keep living in that, that's a form of control. The feeling of you needing keep to yourself go. Yourself in that fearful mm-hmm. area, to where if you don't make it to a meeting, right, your world's going to come tumbling. Exactly. Down. And some people do I feel agree. that way. You know, right and now. more power to them to get to a meeting if it's going to keep from drinking. But at some point, if your God is the 12 steps, like Mitch says, if mm-hmm. your God is the meetings, at some point, it's got to go further than that. Yeah, yeah. It has to go further than you, that. You, you have to go to the... And, in biblical and really terms, that'd be a false it. idol, wouldn't it? Or That's whatever, exactly in what biblical terms. In biblical terms, that would be considered a false idol. Yes, you bet. Yeah. You know, there are people, I believe, that have that are that have taken it to the next level, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and those are people that you're going to learn from. Mm-hmm. And man, you know, I do. I really listen to to everybody, you know, when they speak, because I can get something out of whether it's it's one word, you know. Mm-hmm. I get triggered a lot. Because somebody's talking about how they went through something using something like this that maybe I have done. Mm-hmm. But that makes me aware that, okay, man, you know, I've, I've got to be careful. Mm-hmm. Because if I get around that situation, I could very easily fall right back, you know. Um, 
I don't have control of this. Mm-hmm. I rely mm -hmm. on my higher power to get right. me through this, and I've never done that before. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I feel comfortable outside the meetings because I'm in God's hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, good, good, good. We're almost out of time. Anybody want to, Devin, you want to chime in there? And well, as far as wants and needs, do I want it? Do I need it? The first day I walked in the doors, when I woke up in the morning, I didn't say to myself, I need to go. I didn't look in the mirror and say, man, I need to go. <laughs> You know, I wanted to go find 1111 Bain Street. Just mm -hmm. wanted to go walk in. Just wanted to go. I want it now. Yeah, I need it in my life, obviously, looking at the past, looking at what I've done. I I need it for many reasons. Uh, do I want to work the program? Yeah. Do I want it in the, for the rest of my life? No. I, I, you know, that's that saying, there's no finish line. You know, you're not going to graduate. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm stuck in between. I want a diploma after step 12. <laughs> I, you know, that's, that was, the, that was the last thing that me and my sponsor talked about. Uh -huh. She says, hey, this is for the rest of your life. And I said, you know what? No, I want a diploma. I want yeah. a big, pretty, shiny plaque. But oh, we can give you one of those. <laughs> but you know what? This is an ongoing. There's, there's no finish line. There's no end. There's no stop. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, uh, there's that, there's that word "want" again. You know, I want it. I want it to be with me for the rest of my life. I, I wanna, I wanna do this. I. You know, and why do I want to do it? Because I know that I need to, or I'm gonna die. So there's there's wants and needs. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's mm -hmm. how I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I what I really want, what I know I really want is I I I, I want to be productive. I I want peace. You know, I want to have a better relationship with my fellow man. I want to walk in the sunlight of the spirit. Now I may not want all the things that I would have to do to get to there uh, but there's the comfort in the one day at a time you know, I don't have to accomplish mm -hmm. all those things uh, today uh, the um, ongoing in that article that I wrote or that I read excuse me uh, and we'll close with this uh, it says um, and, and, I, and I, I know the answer to these, these things this person's saying but and I think you guys do too it says the organization talking about uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is notoriously difficult to study. Uh, thanks to its insistence on anonymity and its fluid membership and AA's methods, which require surrender to a vaguely defined higher power, involves the kind of spiritual revelations that uh, neuroscientists have only begun to explore. What we do know, however, is that despite all we've learned over the past few decades about psychology, neurology, and human behavior, contemporary medicine has yet to devise anything that works better in my 20 years of treating addicts, I'd never seen anything else that comes close to the 12 steps, says Dr. Drew Pensky, the addiction medi uh, medicine specialist who hosts VH1 Celebrity Rehab. In my world, if someone says they don't want to do the 12 steps, I know they're probably not going to get better. Well, there you have it. Opinionated, perhaps. Let us know what you think. You can email us here at Take12Radio, that's T-A-K-E, the number 12, radio at comcast.net our comments on on the podcasting platforms that uh, you may be tuning into hey listen our closing song for this week is by recovery recording artist and friend of take 12 recovery radio leah martinson it's entitled the road to recovery here's leah
Martinson, Road to Recovery. Hey, a special thank you to my former co-hosts, Brad and Mason, and our guest, Devin, for contributing to Take 12 Recovery Radio, even though that was <laughs> quite a few years ago. Our thoughts are still with you guys. Thank you so much. We love you and think of you often. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, along with the rest of the Take 12 Recovery Radio family. And we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs>